Welcome to Open Heaven Inspiration. This is Mike Gass. Hope you're having a great Sunday. Um, if you are tuning in from the U.S., you know that we're experiencing the return of the Brood X cicada in many parts of the country. These cicadas are a noisy nuisance to most. Um, and if I was doing this broadcast outside right now, you'd be hearing what I'm talking about. So, because um, it's a hot day and they're singing their hearts out. But did you know that these cicadas do more good than they do harm? They give, uh, according to the scientists and the ecologists, they give the trees uh, a light pruning. And uh, rather than killing them, they're a feast for the wildlife. And when they, when they first hatch out of the soil, they're aerating the soil. And when they finish their mission, they're nourishing all of the plants. Would you imagine? So do you have a challenge today that looks bigger than the brood X cicada? If you do, I encourage you to take a deeper look and see if you can't find a blessing in what appears to be on the outside a curse. Deuteronomy 32, 13 says, he nourished them with honey from the rock and olive oil from the stony ground. Well, over the past several weeks, we've been talking about prayer and intercession with a focus on the styles of intercession. Last week, we had Lee Thomas telling us about a soul intercession or how to pray for the lost. And he did it from the perspective of spiritual warfare. So tonight, we have a powerhouse uh, in the in the Facebook studio to share and take us the next step as he shares about warfare intercession. This is Apostle Stephen Lillard. He, is, he serves as the founder and overseer of Kingdom Ambassadors Church and the visionary of Kingdom Ambassadors in Christ Ministries, both based right here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Through his ministry and teaching, he's transformed the lives of many through his wisdom and God-given kingdom revelations. He's also the author of the soon-to-be-released Becoming a Son of God. The subtitle of that book is, is really compelling. Men and women in relentless pursuit of him. So welcome. Blessings to you. Welcome, Apostle Stephen. Thank you for having me, Brother Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, it's always a pleasure and an honor to be on and be able to share and connect with you uh, anytime we do kingdom work. Amen. Yes. Apostle Stephen and I have had a couple of opportunities to minister together uh, with um, Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship in uh, the chapter in, in Hillsboro, and we attended church together for a while. So uh, uh, just he's just a blessing so many ways. Um, now, we've got a lot of ground to cover as usual. An hour might seem like a long broadcast to some folks, but there is so much to talk about when it comes to warfare intercession that we're actually going to be working hard to, to, to squeeze something into 60 minutes. So that said, uh, Apostle Stephen, how did your journey begin as a warfare, spiritual warfare intercessor? Amen. Well, for me, um, you know, my journey began just by going through things in my life, um, you know, coming up in a household where, you know, my family uh, lived, breathed and functioned in the ministry of deliverance and healing. So at a young age, I was able to learn uh, from my parents and those that went before me in the Lord uh, on what it was to combat the enemy, what it was to uh, go through deliverance, what it was to know, you know, to, to really bring kingdom impact to the society and how to, you know, take authority over demon spirits. And uh, so, you know, just coming up and going through things over my own life, you know, using the the, the wisdom, the experience, the, the trials that I went through in my life was able to really, uh, you know, learn uh, through the word of God on how to successfully pray um, you know, my life, you know, being a, a man of God, I'm a, a husband, a pastor, you know, entrepreneur, you know, prayer is my focal point. 
Uh, I don't leave the house without praying because I understand that we live in two dimensions. There is a spiritual realm and a natural realm. Amen. And, you know, the spiritual realm is just as more real than the natural realm. And a lot of people really don't understand what's going on in the heavenlies around us. So, you know, this praying is, is, is very needed, especially for the day and the time that we're living in right now. You know, you see things happening in all of the nations of the earth, you know, yeah. where God has been speaking prophetically for the hour, for the era, for the dispensation and the timing that we're in. You know, prayer is a necessity. It is not just our life support. It is the way that we commune with the Father. It is our very air that we breathe. So I believe that intercession is the way to go uh, when we're standing in the gap for others, when we're praying, talking to the Father for ourselves. And it's very important for a believer to have a prayer life. That, that's fantastic. Now, let's just take one step back and, and lay somewhat of a foundation for tonight. Um, what is the difference between prayer and intercession? That's good. That's good that you said that. You know, I just, you know, even in, in studying and praying, you know, there's some things that I just jotted down, but I wanted to talk about what the Lord really kind of gave me. But we understand that praying is having that one on one time with God. OK, prayer is talking to him, it's communing with him, it's listening to him. Um, you know, it's it's not just approaching the father when we have a need. Prayer is how we commune. You know, it's just like a, a natural parent and a child. You know, you they have to communicate to relate to one another, to be able to release, you know, what's on each other's heart, to bring instruction, to bring clarity and guidance. Prayer is that way that we talk to God so that we can, you know, hear from him so he can show us the ways to go so that we can be built up in our faith in him and that he can really lead us. Um, you know, intercession involves it, it, it's standing in the gap, you know, that it's when we're praying for other people, you're, you're laying that foundation uh, for someone, you have to be willing to pray. And I, I know that there's power in the word of God and there's power in words. You know, I've heard a lot would say, well, it doesn't take that much or you don't have to pray. You have to pray because words have power. And when yeah. we open up our mouths, you know, angels of the Lord carry the word of God before the father. You know, that word is executed at our command because the angels have been given charge over us and we command them to do certain things in the atmosphere. And that word is what God has given us. We have uh, that power in our mouths. So we Say have that. To that power. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That is so powerful. Now, can a busy person, a person with a busy schedule, can they flow effectively as a warfare intercessor? Well, yeah, you know, that that's that's a good point that you said that. But I'm, I'm going to just take a step back and I'm going to just address a few things about prayer. And then I'm going to go into the question that you just asked. That's but I want to talk about uh, several Greek words. There were some things in my in my time with God that I've learned over the years about intercession um, and, uh, and really preparing yourself for prayer, uh, preparing yourself to engage the enemy, preparing yourself. Uh, so here's here's a, here's one word. It's called uh, ephumian. OK, E-P-H-O-N-I-U-M. It means to pray or to for to wish something to happen. You can find that in second or first Corinthians uh, 13. OK, then you have uh, sukomai. All right. And sukuma means to pray, to be earnest or fervent in prayer. And that's what that prayer is talking about when the Apostle Paul is addressing the church in Romans chapter uh, eight, verse 26, when it says, pray with intercession, pray with groanings that cannot be uttered, praying in the Holy Ghost. That is another form of intercession that we pray. And that is a spiritual entail that the enemy cannot come in and dissect because he doesn't understand the language between the father and his creation. And that comes by way of praying in the Holy Spirit. Then you have a rota, okay? That's E-R-O-T-A-O. -O. It means to pray or to ask to be uh, seated, okay? In Acts 23, 18. Then you have deomai, D-E-O-M-I-A, which means to pray or to desire, to beseech, to request, uh, to make your petition known unto God. And that's in second, uh, second Corinthians chapter five. Okay. Verse 20. So when you engage in intercession, 
uh, you have to be able to anchor yourself down. You have to be able to plant yourself. You have to have foundation because if you are very busy, there is no way you're going to be able to pray effectively because it takes some things that we have to do in preparation. And one of the reasons why a lot of people lose the battle or we don't get our prayers answered for one is because we pray amiss. OK, we pray outside of the will of God. And another one is because we're so busy. OK, when we talk to God, we go in, you know, it's like in five minutes, we're ready to go and go do something else without really hearing the instruction on what he wants to say to us, especially when you're engaging in warfare. OK, and I, I like to use this analogy of the military. OK, anytime you get ready to go into battle or anytime you get ready to engage your enemy or your adversary, you have to have preparation. You have to learn about where they are. You have to know what's going on. You have to know about the region or the territory. You have to know how they're engaging or affecting the people. Right. So that's the same thing we have to do. We have to strategize when we get ready to engage in warfare and the sessions. Amen. So I think that what you're saying is that uh, that for warfare intercession, if a person is too busy, that it's not going to be as effective. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, what sets? So so far, we've had several several broadcasts. We've got several more to come because we're going to cover about twelve different styles of of intercession. What sets warfare intercession apart from the others? Well, you can say warfare intercession can be um, that is a different type. Like I said, prayer is engaging as communication. Warfare, you're taking on a different mindset. You're taking on a different frame of thought. You're taking on a different posture. OK, you, there's things that you do in warfare intercession that you won't do in just normal prayer. You can get up in the morning and pray. Uh, over your day. You can speak over your life, pray over your family, pray over your, your spouse, your children. But when you when you war, where you're warring in the spirit, OK, it takes a different level of of engagement. So that means that you just can't come in, you know, any kind of way. You have to come in with a different posture. All right. So what I want to talk about is, uh, you know, ways or things that we can use in warfare prayer in that preparation. Number one is fasting. OK, we understand in warfare prayer. OK, it takes fasting because fasting crucifies the flesh. It, it, it causes Amen. us to be more sensitive to the spirit. So not only can we hear God more clearly, but the word of God is more potent. It's more powerful. Amen. That's why even when you read in, in, in the book of Luke, when Jesus uh, was led into into the wilderness when he was tempted of the devil, you know, him fasting 40 days and 40 nights, the word of God was so powerful, amen, it was able to back the enemy up. And that's what happened. So fasting is the number one thing that we can do, okay? It positions our faith uh, to receive the breakthrough, right? Then we have the blood of Jesus in warfare prayer. Uh, we got to go in, come, you know, the Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Right. You go in and you begin to, uh, you know, plead the blood of Jesus. You begin to pray uh, with the blood. In Revelation 12, it says that we overcome the devil by what? The blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Amen. Right? Amen. So then you have the word of God in Hebrews chapter four. We know the Bible says that the word is quick and powerful. It's sharper than a double edged sword. It divides the soul from the spirit. There's yeah. this thing called merismos where, you know, you know, we understand that we are three part being, but we operate in a soulish realm and a spiritual realm, you know, and that word is more effective when we are in the spirit because the, the nephesh or the ruach of God, the life of God backs the word when we decree it out of our mouth. OK, and we got to make sure that we're dead to the flesh so that the spirit of God is in total control. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as we understand, there's power in the name of Jesus. All right. At the name of Jesus, demons shall flee. Bible says at the name, everything in heaven, under heaven, above the heavens shall bow at the name of Jesus. And yes. because we are one with Christ, because we are in him. Amen. We can decree a thing and it will be established because of the authority that we come in. Right. So that's those are those are some key things. And, and the last one I want to say is praise. I believe that Brother Mike praise is a weapon. 
I believe that praise breaks shackles. I believe that it breaks chains. I believe that praise is another way of warfare engaging the enemy. Amen. Because, you know, if you're coming in and, and the spirit of heaviness is, let's just say you're going to a place or a family or even on yourself. Okay. Sometimes you may not know what to pray. All right. But something happens when there is high level of spiritual worship or praise that takes place. Shackles begin to break. Things begin to, to take place. Amen. And people begin to get free by the level of warring in praise. I believe that yes. is powerful. Amen. That's why the Bible says when Jehoshaphat and was in the Bible and, and, and Jehoshaphat, the Bible says that they sent ambush, they sent praisers before and it began to disrupt some things. OK, so whatever the enemy is trying to plot against us. Amen. When we begin to praise God, it begins to confuse the enemy. Amen. And praise. And I'm going to jump powerful. in here. And I, I just you know, want to encourage. And I just want. This is great. I just want to encourage everyone who's listening tonight. Uh, Apostle Stephen, he's on fire, and he's bringing home the bacon, so to speak. So if you're if you're engaging, if you're enjoying this, please remember to share it. Uh, put in your comments, your your um, your reactions. When you do that on a live broadcast, it'll cause this to get out to more people because this is a yeah. message that a lot of people need to hear to take their intercession to the next level. Absolutely. But uh, if you would like to continue, so so you're you're sharing about about the weapons of our warfare right now. Yes. And would you like to share some more along those lines? Absolutely. Absolutely. If we can, you know, if, if you don't mind, I just want to just go real quick and I'm just going to read in Ephesians chapter six. OK, and we understand that this is about putting on our spiritual armor. And, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to read it uh, starting at verse 10. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the wiles of the devil. For we do not Number 12 is where I want to focus, Brother Mike. It says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This yes. Is, a lot of us have to come back to the drawing board and refocus our attention because a lot of a lot of us, a lot of people now, they are wasting their time and energy and engaging in a battle that really doesn't matter. OK, fighting against one another. Amen. Is not going to keep the devil from attacking families, generations, or individuals. The Bible says that we fight against what? Spiritual authorities, rulers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. And then even in the ESV, when it breaks it down, it says the cosmic powers, the present darkness, spiritual forces of evil. And then it says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And after having all that you stand, stand firm. Verse 14 says, stand therefore. This is the ESV, okay? It says, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for your feet to go in battle, all right? The, the readiness of the gospel of peace, all right? So we have to understand that one of the ways to prepare ourselves on a daily basis is to make sure that we are armed with our spiritual gear. And we understand that, okay? Um, so warfare in the session is, is, is very um, strategic. You know, praying is the life support. It also, not only does it break barriers, but it also helps us to break uh, into different areas where the enemy tries to resist us, all right? So, um, so you know, you have praise, the blood of Jesus, using the word of God, fasting and prayer. OK, the Bible says this kind comes not out by what prayer and fasting. Some strongholds cannot be broken until we kill the flesh. It is very important because Jesus said, if any man uh, wants to come after me, let him deny himself uh, take up his cross and follow me. And that comes to a, that comes with a certain level of sacrifice. All right. Now, so, you know, I believe when I went to business school, they talked about risk and reward. Now, okay. that when you're investing in stock, usually the greater the risk, the greater the return. Absolutely. So as we talk about the sacrifice that goes into warfare intercession, what are some of the returns? 
Yes. Well, I, I believe that, you know, when you war, you know, intercession, first you have to look at it. What does that mean? Intercession means enter. You're entering into something, right? So that means that when you are interceding, especially you're, you're praying for someone or something. All right. I like to use the analogy of Daniel in chapter 10, when the Bible says that he prayed for the Israel, for the nation. Okay. And within, uh, he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and his answer still didn't come three and a half weeks went in and the bible says that they a stronger angel had to come to assist his angel michael had to come why because you know sometimes just praying one time is not going to get the answer and what the enemy desires to do is he desires and what he's trying to do now is frustrate the body of christ he wants to wear down the church emotionally and physically because we're not seeing the answers to our prayers. The Bible even says that hope deferred makes a heart sick. Who can know it? Right. So but that's the enemy strategy. But we have to understand that if we pray and intercede, we have to continue. When you said what is the qualification or how, um, you know, a person cannot be busy. I want us to understand that. Everyone that's listening to us tonight on Facebook Live and around the world, okay, you cannot be busy. You cannot have a busy schedule. When you are interceding, if you want to see results, amen, you have to posture yourself. You have to have a mindset. You have to have a determination and you have to have faith that's able to move mountains. And you have to go in an expectation that as you pray and you're believing God that he will bring the answer. That's another thing, brother Mike. But, but let's, let's, take, a, let's take a step. Let's take one yes. step here, Apostle Stephen. So a yes. lot of folks will look at you and they would say, well, he's an apostle. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, he's a husband. And uh, he's here on Facebook Live right now. Yes. So they would say, they might say, well, how does he have time for all this intercession and all this prayer? Can, can you help us with that? Well, you know, one of, the, one of the things we have to understand is that intercession and prayer should go where you go. Uh you don't have to just oh, come right. to church to pray. You know, you don't have to just be uh, in the amongst the body of Christ on a Sunday morning to pray. You know, prayer goes where you go. Uh, you can pray in the marketplace, you know, the mountains of society, the spheres of influence. You know, we have education, arts and entertainment, government, you know, uh, different uh, avenues that, you know, people, business owners, career minded people, you know, people that work every day nine to five some people are business owners okay we can pray in every sphere of influence prayer goes where we go right say that yeah prayer goes where we go and so when you talked about the the body of christ getting frustrated and getting tired out that's that's one of the things that, that we were going to get to but you know we're here so that's this is one of the pitfalls of warfare intercession how can a person avoid that pitfall? Well, another thing, like you, you don't want to, you don't want to. Um, what I like to say is get burnt out in battle. Um, there is a way to pray and be successful, but then there is a way to pray and waste time. Paul said it. You know, we pray is. You don't want to pray. It's like swinging and you're fighting against the air. OK, are your shadow boxing? All right. We had a word today about boxing in the spirit and prayer and intercession is like fighting against the enemy. And that comes with different levels. You have amateur, you have skilled, you have pro and professional. And, you know, you develop your spiritual gifts. You develop your faith by fighting through different levels of warfare. OK, because that, like, like they say, you know, um, the higher you go. The bigger the level, the bigger the devil. That is yeah. a true statement. OK, so you, we have to understand, you know, and a lot of people, you know, sometimes when we try to take on something that we are not qualified, skilled or ready for, that brings unnecessary warfare. I like okay. to say, pick and choose your battles. Right. So you're touching um, on another, another one of the pitfalls. So how can a person yes. what kind of guidelines or what kind of. Uh, what can a person follow to avoid the, these kind of casualties? This you kind of, of uh, you know, un, unintended, unintended uh, failure. Let's just put it that way. Right. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, and my wife says it best, stay in your lane. You, you have to know what God has called you to. 
You have to know uh, the purpose and the plan for your life. You have to know your assignment. You have to know the time and the season. The Bible says that the sons of Ishikar knew the time and the season and they knew what to do. OK, so there are certain seasons that come around. And when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, that's the one of the, the avenues of prayer is to keep you in sync with the Holy Spirit. It keeps you in sync with with the movement of God, with the voice of God. Right. So that you're not wasting time or you're not uh, praying amiss or losing out by focusing on things that, you know, necessarily is not meant for you to focus on in that time or in that season. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. Yeah. So um, are there any other areas of intercession that you would like to talk about? I know that when we were preparing for this, you, you talked about many different subjects that you could cover. Right. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I believe um, that we are, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter two, verse six, that we are raised up. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And I want to just really focus on the power of the text, because when you understand who you are in Christ, right, when you yeah. understand your purpose, your destiny, what you're called to, the dominion that he called you to walk in, when you understand that you are born of a new spirit, when you come to Jesus Christ, that you take on a new nature, a new man, uh, the characteristics of Christ, you understand that when you pray now, OK, when you understand who you are in Christ, your mindset changes, right? Your intellect changes, your intel and revelation changes. God begins to speak to you differently. So I like to say uh, praying from the commanding heights. All right. And what that means, Brother Mike, is that uh, when you pray, right, the Bible says uh, in Ephesians, we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Right. I want us to understand that. OK, so the Greek word in that uh, there's a phrase is called pneumokinas pornea eparamos. And this means to speak of types of spirits found in the high places that are responsible for anything that is perverted, depraved, OK, debased or corrupt. So we have to understand 99.9 .9 of the time we are fighting against things that are perverted, things that are corrupt things that are abased, okay, things that are, are, are depraved, uh, things that, that come to bring people outside of their kingship, their queenship, okay? The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. So when we pray from the seated position, all right, I like to say we, we when, when you take a different posture of prayer, see, it's something about a faith-filled believer uh, my brother, when they know who they are in Christ and you begin to decree and declare from the seated position, that means when Christ, the, the, the seated position means he sat down. That means if somebody's that getting blessed done. by this, by what he's, what he's talking about right now. Let's put seated yeah. position in seated these position. comments. I'm taking yeah. my seated position. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're taking a seated position. That means that we don't toil. We don't fight. Amen. To wear ourselves out. When you are in Christ, the victory is already yours. Amen. Yes. So when you decree in from the high place in the heavenlies with Christ seated down, that means the work is done. That means you're looking down over principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of spiritual wickedness in high places, and you're commanding them to bow to the name of Jesus. You're taking authority over them, amen, and breaking their systems. You're breaking their connections. You're breaking their control from the heavenly position. See, a lot of people, we come to God and we look up and we're praying upwards when God says, no, 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 no. You're already a victorious people. I've already defeated the devil. I've already won the battle. And I've already given you the victory in my name. Now you're praying from a different position. Your posture has to be different. That means that your eyesight, your eyesight has to be different. Your mindset has to be different. Your word level has to be different because now you're decreeing from another position. That means you're not praying from the earthly realm. You're going in the spirit realm and you're praying from the spirit realm, controlling the earthly realm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
That's why the Bible says whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Why? It's because we're already in the heavenlies praying yeah. from the seated position in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah, amen. bring that on. Hallelujah. So we have to make sure, amen, that when we're praying, come on, especially when we're warfaring, we got to engage the enemy knowing who we are in Christ skillfully, amen, with the word of God so that we can gain a victory over the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so Apostle Stephen, when you're, when you're praying typically warfare prayers, are you praying them uh, over... Over nations, what what levels and what areas are you hitting? Yes, well, it just depends on what God has called you to in prayer. You know, uh, there's watchmen on the wall. There's different type of prayer warriors. You have watchmen. You have uh, people that intercede. Uh, you have those that are, that pray on on for specific reasons. You can intercede for a ministry for a mission. You can intercede for a breakthrough. Uh, and then there's different governmental intercessors. You know, right. it's just like the fivefold ministry. OK, you have the apostles, prophets, advances, pastors and teachers. And then you have those with the apostolic grace of the fivefold ministry. But everybody's not not a fivefold gift. OK, they float. And that's the same thing with inter intercessors. The, 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 the assignment, you have to know the assignment. Some intercessors are called to kings. Some intercessors may be called to governmental officials. Some intercessors may be called to uh, families. Some intercessors may be called to different sectors and different areas of influence. So really, I would have to say you have to know uh, what God has called you to. And then you tap into that particular area of ministry and allow God to use you in that area. And so something I'd like to just try to uh, flesh out a little bit more is what is the key for a person to avoid burnout? I know you've talked about identity, right? Yeah. You talked about it taking our seated position. Are there times yeah. when uh, a warfare intercessor moves into a different, are there different seasons of a warfare intercessor that, that gives you maybe times of rest? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going to take you back to even in Genesis, um, you know, and we have to understand the importance of rest. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because the Bible even says in the book of Genesis, when God created the world, he rested on the seventh day. Yeah. And a lot of people understand well, resting, you know, it's not just not doing anything. You can rest in worship. You can rest in your spirit. Uh, and that's just a place where you're still in the presence and in the peace of God. Right. So, you know, if God created the world on six and rested on seven, that means that you and I also have to, there is a season and a time where we're building, we're praying, we're strategizing, we're getting things done, uh, building the kingdom. And then there's some times where the Lord may say, you know what, I need you to rest for a season where he may tell you not to pray and he may send intercessors or people to cover you in prayer now. So that now you can be built back up. You can be replenished in your heart and spirit so that you can go back out and begin to war because intercessors, here it is. They are uh, always on the front lines, right? And anytime you are engaging the enemy on the front line, the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against yeah. us. But that means that we're warring against the gates of the enemy. That means you're standing against demonic systems. You're standing against demonic attacks okay you're you're standing against retaliation of the enemy and different things he could try to do to come against you so intercessors themselves also need to have people in a team of people that can pray and lock arms with them through certain Amen. times and seasons so that we don't I, get and, and so i'm just going to throw this in so how effective yeah. can a war could a warfare intercessor be who was solo most of the time is, is that a oh, wise okay. thing to do yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, I, I, you know, just as Jesus sent the disciples out in two, uh, I believe that ministry was birthed in teams. I believe in team ministry. Um, I believe that certain intercessors or people can be, they can, they can take or, or, you know, cover a, a certain area, but they should always have someone that they can uh, have agreement. The Bible says one put a thousand. Two can put 10,000. Say that. 
Yeah. Right? And where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. So there's power in unity in the spirit, right? That's why we're fitly joined together, even as the body of Christ. So there is never, it never should be one person or an individual or an I in the equation of kingdom, because it's always we, because we flow from one another. Iron sharpens iron. Even tonight, brother Mike, you know, you sharpen me, I sharpen you. Okay. Iron sharpen iron. And Amen. that's how it should be in the body of Christ. We need one another. Amen. Yeah. Well yeah. said. Are there now Hallelujah. I want to go back to another thing that we were we talked about earlier in your personal life of intercession, of warfare intercession. Can you give us some some testimonies that stand out? Wow. Actually, we, we weren't there before, but I'm tying that yeah. into the rewards. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I, I've seen, you know, through seasons of my life where, you know, I was really uh, in some hard places, uh, some trying places where I really needed a 911 from God. Um, and not only that, but individuals that I love, people in my family, associates, um, you know, standing in the gap, you know, you can intercede for people that are that need a miracle in their life. They need a healing. You can stand in the gap for people that need a financial breakthrough. Uh, you can intercede. So for me personally, intercession, I have been around the mountain on all of those things, uh, really needing God to, to, to be there, to really like they did for Mo, to part the Red Sea in certain areas of my life. Um, but it's taught me. Uh, I think the number one thing of, of of intercede of intercession is knowing that God would never leave you nor forsake you, that yeah. He will never fail you, that He will never let you down. Um, yeah. I've seen God come through in ways that I, I wouldn't have never imagined. I've seen God do things that totally confounded me, come totally just you know, bless my socks off. And I was like, wow, you know, but I didn't see it coming. And that's another thing when we pray. We need to take God out the box. We need to take the limits off of him because he's not yeah. always going to come. Uh, the Bible says he, he may not be there when you want him, but he's always on time. And he may not come like we think he will. God has a way of blessing us that we may not understand. His ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are definitely not on a finite human mindset. Okay. He is yeah. a divine intelligence. He is omniscient, all-knowing, omniscience. That means he is a man creation. He is that. And uh, so we have to take the limits off of God and knowing if we believe him by faith, it's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? We do the work and we obey him and we allow him to work according to our faith. And, and uh, so... I've seen God just believe in him. You know, I've learned to trust him. You know, some things we always grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. We're always going to learn. Every one of us, we're going to learn in our walk with God until the return of the, of the Messiah, until Jesus returns. Um, but while we're on this earth building his kingdom, we have to learn to trust him. You know, we have to learn to trust him. Yeah, I so. feel I feel like that's a. This is a, a special part of the interview. I feel the presence of God that it's ministering to people right now. A lot of people are in some uh, tough places. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, that, those testimonies. You know, as you've gone on this journey of intercession, can you think of people um, that, um, you know, as you said, iron sharpens iron. Can you yeah. think of some folks that have made a real impact on on where you're at today in this grace? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've had many uh, men and women of God, you know, so many to even name, you know, of course, you know, my, 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 my natural birth parents uh, have played a very intrigual part of my life. Um, you know, different men of, of God, you know, we both know even uh, your spiritual covering Apostle Blue and and different ones, my apostolic father, Apostle Axel, and uh, just different people along the way that I've had the opportunity to serve with, uh, connect to, to glean from, to learn from. Um, you know, a lot of times we like to use people that we don't know, you know, like the, 
A.A. Allums and the R.W. Shambox, but I know some great generals right here in the tri-state area, hey, generals that I'm connected to personally that have helped uh, men and women um, that have helped speak into my life over the years that I've really, you know, and actually some of those words released, uh, I didn't see until years. I'm really, a lot of this stuff I'm walking into now uh, over words that was released over my life from years ago. Um, so I just thank God for those that went before me. And that's another thing as the body of Christ, we have to learn how to honor those that have paved the way for us, those yes. that went before us. You know, that's a, that's another thing in our generation, my brother, is we're, we're attacked by the spirit of dishonor, amen, where we don't know how to honor and respect the grace that God places on individuals. But he does that because those individuals have hearts or they had a determination to do the work of the father. And, um, you know, that's the, that mantle that's now being transferred. You know, there is a there is a transference of mantles that's taking place. Uh, there is a, a, a release that's taking place. You know, there is a remnant right now as we speak. Those that are even listening to us tonight, there is a remnant that God is raising up. The Bible says in the in, and that my spirit, Joel says, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. There is a remnant right now that is hungry for the things of God. They're hungry yeah. for a move of God. They're hungry. They're not, um, they don't want the status quo. They're tired of stale things. They don't want the, the things of yesterday. They want the things of the future. They want the things of now. They want the things. What is God saying now? What is he doing now? Amen. And that's what God is doing. He's looking for those that are hungry, that he can pour his spirit out upon so that this next apostolic reformation is coming. Amen. God can begin to bless those and, and bring change to the kingdom. It is about soul winning. Amen. It is it is us now bringing a man uh, cap uh, captives out of the enemy's camp, bringing people into the kingdom that are ensnared by the enemy. Our hearts should be for those that don't know Christ to evangelize the world, to bring those to the Messiah. Amen. So that they can be liberated from the sins of this flesh and for our ancestors. Amen. And I've Amen. seen you do some great ministry with with the younger generation. Where do you see the younger generation um, when it comes to warfare intercession? Are they are they engaging? You know, this generation we live in um, is is a lot different. Um, they they look for uh, to be authentic, but this generation is a lot more challenged on, uh, uh, on the word level. Um, you know, generations formerly. You may have had more of a focal point on learning the word. Now, you know, we see a lot of people in our generation that really don't want to engage in the word of God or Bible study or this personal study, right? Uh, personal love for the word. And I, that's another thing, an in intercession. You have to have a love for the word of God. Amen. You have to have a love for the word of God. I'm going to say that one more time. Yeah. You have to have a love for the word of God. And, why is, that so, why, and why is that so important, Apostle? Well, the number one thing is John chapter one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And yes. if we don't have a love for the word of God, we don't have a love for the word. We don't have a love for God because Jesus he is the Logos. He is the word. Amen. He is the word made flesh. And that's the thing. We come to church sometimes or we have spiritual moves, but we don't have a foundation on the word, which is Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. He is the very essence, the word that we live. So we have to fall in love with the word of God so that every other area of our life can be victorious. So what would you say to a parent that's listening tonight? And, and maybe they have this, they share the, some of the same concerns that you're sharing about the younger generation. Right. Uh, is it, how can they get, what can they do to foster that love for the word of God in their home? Amen. Well, you know, I encourage all parents, you know, the Bible says, you know, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, 
uh, they shall not depart from it. And uh, I was having a conversation with my wife the other day and, uh, you know, she was just sharing things about, uh, you know, childhood experiences and different things. And one of the things that she said was no matter what your children go through, and this is for someone that's listening to me tonight, no matter what is going on in your household, no matter where uh, your your child may be right now, amen, if, if you have prayed for them, if you have given them the word of God, keep declaring the word and keep trusting God because God will make due to his word. He will make due to his word for your family. Amen. And he will bring your child back to him. They may have to go through some seasons. We all did. I had to go through seasons of testing. I had to bump my head a few times. I had to go through some hardships in my life. But those hardships, brother Mike, helped me to develop a strong relationship with God because it was in my own personal experiences and, and, and what I went through, that's what taught me how to develop a strong relationship with the father and because no one brought me out but him. That's why, my, you know, when he says you overcome the devil by the word of the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, it is your testimony. You know, no one can tell your testimony like you can. That's why I love the stories when God delivered Abraham, when he delivered uh, Isaac, when he delivered Moses and different uh, uh, prophets of old. They named the place that he, David, all of those people, he, they named the place that they got victory. It was a memorial, amen. It was a remembrance, amen, of what God did for them, okay? It was a place that they could always go back to when everything was going on in their life, when it seemed like everything was against them. They could go back to that place and say, you know what, Lord, if you delivered me yesterday, you delivered me through this, I know that you can deliver me through that. You delivered me through this. I know that you can bring me through that. And that's what God wants us to do. That's why we come after him. And that's why we have a relationship with him and sonship. That is relationship. That is us and the father. Amen. Us, us communing with our heavenly father, becoming like him in the earth. Okay. And we Amen. name those places that he delivered us out of as a sign that he can take us through anything and bring us out. Yeah, I keep thinking about David. You know, when they brought him before Saul, he said, oh I, slew the, I slew the bear, I slew the lion. This yes. uncircumcised Philistine is just, he's the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's a true statement, you know. And I just believe that this is a year in 2021, amen, the giants are going to fall. And I even just hear the Lord speaking right now prophetically, amen. I just believe the giants are falling now. God is going to raise up, amen, the body of Christ with power, amen, with a new re renewed uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. God is bringing us, amen, into a land that flows with milk and honey. He's going to allow us to experience the goodness of his kingdom. Hallelujah. And we're going to move with power this year. Amen. God is equipping us. He's, 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 he's preparing us to receive and to possess everything that he has declared over our lives. Amen. And that is the place that we need to be is in tune with the spirit so that we can be ready for what God is doing over these next five to 10 years. Hallelujah. Amen Thank to you. that about this year. You know, the Lord showed me back in December that for 2021, the two and the one equals three. And that yeah. we were going to see God, the God in the Godhead in yeah. all of its fullness this year. And, and so praise God for that. Amen. That's good. Now, let's let's talk a little bit about um, we got just a few minutes left here. But if somebody's listening tonight and um they wonder, how can they know if they might be called to warfare intercession? What, what would you tell them? Well, you know, first of all, I would say this. Everyone is called to pray. That, that is for every believer, right? So if you say that I'm, am I called to intercession, you know, one of the things and, I would say. And specifically to the warfare intercession. Yeah. yeah. So there, there are seasons of warfare where, you know, God may call us to pray um, for a particular situation or a particular person or a particular reason or a particular matter. 
So one of the things to, if you know that God has called you to war uh, in intercession, for one, you have to have a drive for it. You have to have a heart for it. You have to have a desire, amen, to, to, to see things break through. And, and one of those uh, things that are a key for you to, to really recognize is how successful are you praying in your own life? Because I always tell intercessors, especially those that are called to warfare, if you don't see the victory or breakthrough in your own life, you're probably not called to warfare intercession for someone else's life, right? So okay. you have to have victory in your own life, right? And God will begin to breathe on you. He will begin to stir up the gifts within you. You know, uh, what gifts do you have, right? You know, what, what drives you? What passions do you have? Do you have a heart to see people free? You know, things like that, you know, just spiritual insight, intel, you know, discernment, warfare intercession. You got, you know, I believe that the spirit of discernment is necessary because you're engaging the enemy. And I tell people all the time, if you're going to fight against an enemy, you have to know about that enemy. None of us can fight against an adversary that we know nothing about. You have to learn about him, his ways, his kindness, how he operated over thousands of years, how he infects us. What did he do in your own bloodline? OK, how do you stop a generational curse? Come on, somebody. You got yep. to realize. So when you call to war for intercession, OK, you're going to have a high in, in, intelligence uh, uh, about the adversary, I believe, because you have to know who you're fighting against. Is that is that discernment, that intelligence? Is it how is it cultivated? Well, it's I believe, like I said, you know, it's it, praying, um, getting with other believers, um, you know, allowing God to speak to you. I kind of like what you just said, you know, before David took kingship and whooped armies in the Philistines and took down Goliath, you know, he was in tending sheep. You know, he fought the lion and the bear, and he got some victory. So. You're going to see victory in your life. God is going to show you at certain levels victory. He's going to you're going to gain a certain um, level of faith. You're going to see victory in your life. OK, you're going to be able to take spoils in certain levels that you go through. So you're going to you're going to see some things uh, when God has called you. If you're called to warfare, uh, you know, I know a lot of ministries and, and even CEOs, uh, Christian CEOs that I know personally, they have people praying for them. They have people warring for their business. Amen. Uh, they, yeah. And, and that's very important, especially, you know, so intercessors, if you are called to intercession, pray for your pastors, pray for your leaders, pray for those, amen, that God has called uh, you to and that's called to you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Would you like to take a few minutes and pray for the listening audience? We've got We've got some folks that are listening now, but I'm sure there'll be many more listening on the replay. Absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. We just play some uh, worship music. Father, we just thank you tonight. Father, I thank you for blessing those tonight. And Lord God, we just pray, Father God, for everyone listening tonight. God, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus, Father, for your will to be done. Father, we thank you right now, God, that no weapon formed against your people shall be able to prosper. Lord God, we thank you right now for doing exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And Father, I thank you for every person on here tonight. I thank you, God, for every person on here tonight, Lord, that you are moving by way of your spirit. And Lord God, I thank you for breaking down shackles. I thank you for breaking down barriers. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you are now, God, moving upon your people. And Lord God, we decree and declare. Father, you said if a king shall decree a thing, it shall be established. And God, we thank you right now, Father, that things are moving, things are turning. And God, we war in the realm of the spirit. And we bind up demonic forces that are bringing casualties, that are bringing calamity, that are bringing hardships against your people. And Father God, we thank you right now for a divine interception. Lord God, we pray right now for 
divine breakthrough. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we declare that no weapon formed against your people shall be able to prosper. And God, we decree that all prodigal sons are coming back to you. God, we declare tonight uh, that all prodigal daughters are coming back to you. Uh, Father God, we declare tonight, hallelujah, God, that the drug dealers are being saved, that those that don't know you are being saved tonight, Father. And we pray, Father God, for spiritual intervention. I thank you for raising up the body, uh, for raising up God intercessors. Uh, God, send your people into the regions. Uh, God, send them into the government. Uh, God, send them into the different spheres of influence. Uh, God, we pray over the religion mountain. Uh, God, we pray over arts and entertainment. Uh, God, we pray, God, for leaders and kingdom people uh, in family, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for overturning the plan of the enemy. And God, we declare tonight victory in the houses of the people that are watching tonight. And if you're watching tonight, we decree over your house. We declare that you will be uh, more than a conqueror. We declare that your household is victorious. We declare that your relationship is healed. We declare right now that you are whole by the power of Jesus Christ. And we declare over you tonight. And Father God, I decree right now, Father, that things are turning around. God, you said that no good thing would you withhold from those who are walk upright. And you also said, God, that when my people are called by my name and they humble themselves and pray and they seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven. Then you will forgive our sins and then you will heal our land. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight for healing your people. I pray miracles, signs, and wonders right now. Father God, those that need a touch from you, those in the hospitals, God, we send this word to them tonight. Those that are watching it by way of, of internet, by way of broadcast, in your homes, in your places of habitation, we declare over you tonight, we send the word, according to Psalms 103.20, that is able to heal. We thank you that the angels of the Lord are excelling in strength tonight. Come on, if you're on here tonight, just begin to pray. God, I thank you right now for a stirring of gifts, uh, for a stirring of faith uh, in the name of Jesus. And I decree, God, that the blessing that is promised shall come. Because you are the I am that I am. And this is the year in 2021 of the great I am. This is the year of great exploits. This is the year that God is going to perform his word in your life and those that you declare for. And God is calling you the intercessor. He's calling you, amen, as a watchman tonight. He's calling you to prayer. He's calling you to intercede. Come on, somebody. He said, will, I, will there be a man or a woman that will stand in the gap? Hallelujah. And I thank you tonight in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we decree over your life that this too shall come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And we just thank God tonight. Amen. And I just minister to you tonight. Hallelujah. There's someone on here tonight. Amen. I just, there's a word of knowledge that came to me, brother Mike. There's someone on here tonight. I saw that they were having pain in their arm. God is getting ready to heal them tonight. We send healing to you tonight. If that's you, whether you hear or, or to watch, there's, there's, a, there's a man that is watching. God is going to heal them. There's a woman that's dealing with knee pain and leg pain. God's healing you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you. Lord, for your healing power in Jesus name. There is someone that's dealing with heart pain. God's healing you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We decree and declare it done. Receive your healing in Jesus name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That was powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, praise God for that. Thank Hallelujah. You. Um, Thank well, you, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Get the spirit on me strong right now, man of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing, you know, it's one thing for us to talk about it, but it's another thing for us to demonstrate it. So amen for that. Thank you, Jesus. Would you, um, 
would you like to share with the listeners how they can connect with your ministry? Amen. Amen. You can connect uh, with our ministry. Uh, you can just follow me, uh, Stephen Lillard. Uh, you can go to our church, Kingdom Ambassadors Church. Uh, you can follow us on our different avenues, uh, our different outlets. You can follow us on YouTube. Uh, you just go to Steve Lillard or Kingdom Ambassadors Church, and you can follow us on our YouTube uh, channel. Amen. And we just thank God for you all tonight. And we encourage you all to get a copy of the book, Becoming a Son of God. It will bless and revolutionize not only your life, but everyone that is connected to you. Amen. Can you can you give us some? Um, yes. Get, just give us some nuggets to, to get Absolutely. the folks interested in the book a little bit more. Yes. Well, in this book, we, you know, we really engage the culture that we live in. Uh, you know, I believe that God has given us a lot of revelation to reveal a man, what the, uh, to reveal the strategy of the enemy and his ensnaring uh, tactic and how he operates to try to keep us out of our sonship and bringing us into the revelation and God revealing the mystery of who we are in Christ and our and our true identity and our kingship uh, as kings and priests under the Lord Jesus Christ and what that order looks like after Melchizedek and just really going into a man the uh, the the anointing uh, that God wants us to walk in. So I believe it's going to open up the eyes and the hearts of the readers and really bring them to a deeper level and desire to want to know God. And it's going to help bring them freedom from the things that they may have faced in their past. And it's really a, a generational book. I believe it's going to affect generations to come. So we just encourage you all to just get a copy of that uh, when that release is done, uh, should be released this month. And I'm excited about that. So just stay tuned uh, for that release and we will let you know where you can get the book and uh, just get the book amen and buy a copy for your loved one and be a blessing to someone now, i think that's one of the things that um obviously we, we didn't get to tonight but that's one of the powerful things about your ministry is that generational dynamic that goes on um are there any upcoming events that you'd like to share about well we just had one my wife had a powerful event um a women's conference this month and uh we are planning for another event i believe that the date is august so we'll, we'll put that information out uh, as we begin to uh, get all the logistics together. But I believe that that's going to bless our region. It's going to bless us here in the tri-state as we plan for that. Uh, other than that, we just have, you know, church services on Sunday mornings at 1130. Uh, and then we're online Wednesday night at seven. And then we have uh, our citywide prayer meetings, uh, first and third Friday. Uh, we have been doing on a conference call and it's coming through the whole pandemic thing. But. Uh, we were uh, at our location and kind of other areas where we would just pray uh, for God to break through and just praying for the city, praying for our leaders, praying for our, our government, our city council, and just locking arms with other leaders in the city uh, to bring change in our very own backyard. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. You know, I, um, I'm, I'm going to share this as we wind out, but I remember the testimony of a pastor who was invited to go to Africa and he checked in with the Lord before he said yes. And the Holy Spirit said, you haven't been across the street yet. My goodness. You're not going to Africa. So they, they ended up evangelizing mm -hmm. the whole area. And the next time the door opened, that's when he got the green light. So... Yeah. <laughs> But thank you for joining us, Apostle Stephen. Um, I can just feel that prayer wheel turning, that fire, that that edge that God has given you. And I know that some people are going to be recalibrated from this. Amen. 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 So for next week, um, we have Pastor John and Amy Burgess who will be with us. They will be talking. Actually, it's in two weeks from now. They'll be talking about mercy intercession. John Burgess is a bivocational minister who's been in the ministry as a lead pastor for uh, 19 years and has served as a public school teacher for 20 years. And at the beginning of the pandemic, John and his wife, Amy, they launched out a dynamic teaching and prayer ministry on Facebook called Third Heaven Productions. So they launched out 
as soon as the pandemic started, been in one of my favorite ministries uh, to listen to. So um, they're both passionate intercessors, passionate lovers of Jesus, passionate lovers of mankind. So look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Until then, be blessed. And let's remember when we pray to pray from that seated position.